Hey YouTube, what's going on? I'm Greg. Welcome back to my machine shop. Today we're going to continue working on the crankshaft for the Wallaby 30cc engine. Last time we worked on the crank pin journals and the crank webs. This time we're going to turn our attention to the main journals. We were able to rough it out last time, but this time we're going to finish all the work on the lathe. All right, well, let's just jump into it. We're going to leave the main bearing journals as the final turning task on the lathe. So now we're going to turn our attention to the surfaces where the flywheel is mounted on the rear and the pinion gear, water pump pulley, and starter dog on the front. Here we're working on the front of the crankshaft. We have completed the crank webs, so we will use them as our datum point. That is the surface we will measure off to establish the length of the main bearing journal on the front and the length of the shaft section for the accessories that mount on the front of the crankshaft. I'm going to stop the lathe for a moment and point out a few things. First of all, we've switched to a smaller lathe dog, one that properly fits the shaft. We've ensured the securing screw is very tight on the lathe dog. It will be turned down further and threaded. And so if we leave marring marks, it won't be a problem. A recurring theme that we'll continue to come back to is being cognizant of putting any forces onto our crankshaft that would potentially twist it or bend it or knock it out of perfect alignment. So when we tighten this screw on this lathe dog, we clamp the lathe dog in a vise and tighten it. We do not hold the crankshaft and tighten it down or hold the crankshaft in a vise and tighten it down. So we have finished this section here on the front of the crankshaft where the pinion gear will mount and we have turned down the main journal here but we have not turned the main journal down to size. We've left a few thousandths over size because we will finalize and finish all of the main journals in one final pass when we're all done with everything else except the threading. We've also finished this shoulder here that the main bearing rests against and this shoulder here where the pinion gear rests. We flipped the lathe dog to the other end, remounted it in the lathe, and now we're working on the surface where the flywheel mounts. And like we did on the front end of the crankshaft, we turned down the main bearing journal within about five thousandths of final dimension, and the shoulder where the bearing mounts. I measure the distance between the two bearing shoulders to ensure my crankshaft will fit properly in the crank case with little to no end play. In hindsight, I would have turned down these shoulders later because when I finished the main bearing journals, I bump against these shoulders and took off a little bit of material, more than I would have liked. So now it's time for one of the most critical operations, turning the main bearing journals to the proper size. We set the tool to the proper height by comparing it to the live center in the tailstock. Next, we need to ensure our large, flat-faced, bifurcated tool is absolutely flat to the surface. We determine this by painting die kim on the surface and bringing it in very carefully and noticing if one edge or the other moves the die kim first. We adjust this until the die kim is taken off by the whole tool at the same time. We advance the tool ever so carefully, bringing the main journals to their final dimension. I use lots of spring passes and measure multiple times to ensure I'm able to sneak up on the final dimension. We turn the middle bearing journal and the front bearing journal in the same way. What's important is we're doing all three of them in the same setup. Pretty happy with that. So we're getting ready to thread. I've placed a mark here as a reference mark and we'll also measure from this edge here. Remove this material and thread this. And we'll use a wrench when we turn it with the die. Then we flip it around in the lathe and turn down the other end in preparation for threading. 
wood block. This rests against this. I pull with the wrench. Meanwhile, turning this as we go. There's one end threaded and then both ends threaded. Then I trim off the extra quarter of an inch from each end and it's time to remove our spacer blocks, which are epoxied in. I wrap the crankshaft in tin foil, put it in the toaster oven at 300 degrees for 45 minutes. Oh, that worked pretty good. That cleaned up really nice. 300 degrees for about 45 minutes. Worked out well. All right. Next order of business, the counterweight. We're going to start with some quarter inch plate. Mark off a couple of circles. Turn this outside radius on the lathe. Move to the mill. Cut this out. Let's see how it goes. I rough cut the blanks out with a cutoff wheel, then head to the lathe to start work on the fixture. I clamp a block of scrap aluminum, I think it's one inch by three quarters of an inch in the four jaw chuck, then face it and mark the center with a center drill. I move the entire chuck over to the mill, touch off on the center point of the workpiece, and then drill and tap two 1032 holes three quarters of an inch apart. Remount the chuck in the lathe, then go back to the mill and drill the two matching clearance holes on the, our disc workpieces. After screwing the workpieces onto our mandrel in the lathe, we have ourselves a simple turning operation. We take our finished round blanks and cut them in half through the holes and mount them in the mill. We touch off the mill's z-axis on the parallels, clamp the workpieces in the vise, machine the top flat. Then I take a file and clean up all the edges so I can take a edge finder and find the exact center of the workpiece. Cut the notch to the proper depth and width to match the crank web, checking it against the crankshaft. Spot drill and drill the two holes for the mounting screws, but I don't use the clearance drill bit size, I use the tap drill bit size because I want to use these holes to match drill the holes in the crankshaft. One important thing to note, these holes are not centered side to side, they're offset to one side because the counterweights are offset from the center of the crank webs. Flip the workpiece over and then use the drill bit to center the x-axis of the mill over our hole. Then load a 3 16th inch end mill to create our countersink. The countersink should be close to, but should not break through, the edge of the part. Now it's time to match drill and tap the holes in the crankshaft to mount the counterweights. I clamp the crankshaft in the mill vise, mounting the counterweights on the top of the vise, and then use the drill bit to locate the hole. I don't use the drill bit to spot drill the hole into the crankshaft because it will still wander. I load a spot drill and then spot drill and drill the hole in the crankshaft. Oh, and tap for a 440 screw as well. Once I've finished using the counterweight as a drill guide, I drill the hole to clearance size. That's the first counterweight completed and mounted. Now we do this three more times and mark each counterweight to ensure they're returned to the same crank web that they were match drilled to. We test fit the crankshaft and the crankcase ensuring the counterweights don't have any interference issues. We have the, we have some lightning holes that are drilled through the crank pin journals. Then we have some oil gallery holes. Oil enters through the main journal and then oils the crank pins. 
Drilling of the lightning holes requires a little bit of a special setup. I need to ensure the crankshaft is perfectly vertical and in line with the z-axis. And I want to clamp on the crank web near the pin journal I'm drilling. As stated before, I don't want to have any twisting load put onto the crankshaft. With the lightning holes drilled, we can turn our attention now to the oil galleries. The strategy here will be to, to just tap this hole here to establish the center point. Then we'll mount this at an angle and use an end mill to start this hole, drill it all the way through, then turn it the other way. Again, use the end mill to start the hole because the drill is going to want to then drill this hole. Let's do it. We've used our edge finder to find the exact center of the center main journal and then use a 16th inch end mill to establish the starting point for our oil gallery hole. We expend extra effort to ensure the crankshaft is mounted at exactly the proper angle. We don't want to break through the side of the crank web with our drill bit. Then we carefully plunge with a 16th inch end mill to start the oil gallery hole in the right direction. Follow it up with a drill bit, drilling all the way through to the lightning hole. Once both angled oil gallery holes are drilled, we turn the crankshaft over, center the mill between the crank webs and the vise jaws, then drill the crank pin oil gallery holes. Good job! Now it's time for the final operation, machining the 16th inch keyways. I'm taking five thousandths deep cuts, moving the table by hand very slowly. Nice, and no broken end mill. <laughs> Notice here I started cutting in the wrong area. This is where the ball bearing mounts. If I had cut this all the way through, I could have a potential for an oil leak. And there's our completed crankshaft. If you've made it this far, you're doing great. Hey, I'm Greg. Thanks for visiting me in my machine shop. Until next time, take care.